Well, welcome to the live checkup. This is where we sit down with Dr. Asante LeBlanc and ask all the possible questions we can when it comes to our health and care. Let me just tell you this first off. Dr. Asante LeBlanc is the medical director and owner of Victoria Clinic, your home for holistic health care in Trinidad and Tobago. Victoria Clinic is located at 54 Gala Street in Woodbrook. Dr. LeBlanc is a medical doctor and certified medical herbalist. She is an integrative health care practitioner, bringing together the eastern and western branches of medicine so as to better guide patients on their path to optimum health. She's also a certified clinical densitometrist, specialist in diagnosis and treatment of osteoporosis. At Victoria Clinic, services offered include medical consultations, traditional Chinese medicine consultations, acupuncture, medical herbalism, blood tests, electrocardiograms, lung function testing, and dexter bone density testing. You can contact Victoria Clinic at 622-2221 or 622-0683. Follow them on Facebook, Victoria Clinic, or Instagram, Victoria Clinic underscore Trinidad. Website www.victoria-clinic.net. This is the live checkup. I'm JD. Now, let's jump into today's conversation. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the live checkup. I'm JD. It is good to be inside of your world. And this young lady right here, you know her as the doc. Ginger doc, too, but it's Dr. Sanche <laughs> LeBlanc. <laughs> And Dr. Asante Leblanc is the owner of Victoria Clinic. And we've been doing this for the past year and a half, sitting together, sharing the information, and in fact, taking the information out of the doctor to share to the world, those of you that have been religiously looking on at us pertaining to your health. So inside of the live checkup today, we're speaking about a very important topic that many of us may not, in some cases, may not even be aware that we are suffering from or going through that journey at the minute. And many of us, there are some, that seriously recognize it and just don't know how to deal with it. This is where we take it from the dark. We've got to. She's going to speak on it today. But first off, I've got to always ask, how are you doing, Dr. Santa LeBlanc? Hi, good evening, everybody. Hi, JD. I am good. I can't complain. <laughs> I like that. Can't complain. And as always, you know, we would certainly share later on inside of our conversation where you can communicate with Dr. Santa LeBlanc and you can certainly check out the office, the clinic at Gala Street in Woodbrook. But Dr. Santa LeBlanc, I think you mentioned it as well, and it is something that um, it seems like I can attest to many of these things because I came to you with this same situation some months ago, um, unaware that it's something that was actually happening to me. And it can be a co- attributed to many contributing factors in our life. Anxiety. We have heard about anxiety attack, a control anxiety, a chest feeling like, oh, you're having a heart attack. And they may say, it's not that. You just may be stressing a little bit a lot too, or too much. So I want to uh, certainly start off with this question. What is an anxiety attack? What is this thing called anxiety? <laughs> JD, anxiety is your body's, um, dare I say, exaggerated response to stress. Mm. so it is when our body has a flight or fright um, response a fight or flight response and that's where our sympathetic nervous system which is totally unconscious and autonomic right um will take over and help with our adrenaline rush and it's like if somebody hits comes to rob you or attack you yeah. you have this all of a sudden this energy that you never knew you had however with epinephrine and firing of the sympathetic nervous system, adrenaline, um, you get increased heart rate, shortness of breath, um, your heart just thumping out of your chest, profuse sweating, you can get lightheaded, dizziness. Um, All of that can be encompassed. And when there's an anxiety situation or an anxiety disorder, then that is where your body is responding to the stress, but in an exaggerated way. So you're feeling these symptoms when it's it's just a stress that came on and so what happens is that it's it's almost as though your coping mechanism to right. deal with stress from a mental standpoint is not strong enough at that point in time to deal with the stress so it's very important for us now especially during the pandemic because that's a huge stress on us 
And between the media reports, I mean, I, I live to hear who is positive, who is negative, what's happening, mm -hmm. how many deaths, what's going on. And that can eventually erode your coping mechanism and cause an internal anxiety and stress um, situation. Anxiety can be acute anxiety, or you can have an anxiety disorder. And that can include phobia, social phobia, social anxiety that you don't want to go out, acrophobia where you don't want to be in a, pu in a public situation. You can have generalized anxiety disorder where everything just seems to be coming, crashing down. Um, so there are different levels and degrees of anxiety, but it's all about your response to stress. So later on, we'll or perceived about, stress. Perceived stress. So later on, we'll speak about some of the ways we can deal with it, whether it be the natural way. Of course, you are a holistic doctor, and you speak about you know the different ways we can certainly amend and deal with the different things that we have. But you just touched on COVID nineteen and this pandemic in which we're living in. Many persons even myself want question what is going on you just don't know how to deal with certain things but i also remember having a conversation with someone some time ago because you said something that just hit the nail on the head and this for a second i said maybe that's exactly what this young man has i was speaking to a friend and she was saying that her son who's a young teenager was you know one of those that as a result of covid 19 refuses to go outside during this time because you know he doesn't want to you don't know who can have this COVID-19 virus and that sort of thinking. Is that some sort of sign of a, a, maybe a mild form of anxiety? Well, it's a phobia. So yes, mm -hmm. because your coping mechanism. So you, you're so fearful. So that fear, your body's reaction to that stressful situation is one. And it, it makes you fearful of, of confronting the unknown, dare I say. So it, it also um, depends on how it was dealt with when COVID started, um, right. how you spoke okay. about it to your children, right. how you dealt with it. With, and, and then you remember school was closed abruptly. Your social interaction with the, the peers was cut dramatically. Um, it was only screen time. You, you were, and your, your home environment may not be optimum. You know, some people escape from home uh, mentally. You understand? Mm -hmm. So all of those can impact, especially on the younger generation. And this is why it's important to remind our young children and our teenagers and our young adults to speak to someone, right. reach out and speak. And, and we've had that discussion where during COVID, it's important that you reach out and you have that discussion with yes. your doctor, your mother, your brother, your sister, your friend about how you're feeling and what you're going through. And, and, and don't think that you're alone and don't think it's a sign of weakness because everybody is stressed out. It's a pandemic. It's, it's around the world. And none of us are blasé about it. We may show different reactions, but none of us are blasé because we're all human beings and mm -hmm. we're facing mortality. And that's very important. So it's important to have the conversation and important to remind whoever it is that they're not alone and to give the opportunities of, of help. So your physician, um, your, your priest, your friends, your, 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 so, your, your partner at that time, you know, all those are important um, persons in your life in terms of your support system. So you're speaking about therapy, which is one of my future questions, but we'll get to that in just a bit, because why not have that conversation? Well, even a counselor someone to speak to just use and that's one of the, the the things you hear in the constant covid adverts that they're putting out there speak to someone have conversations especially if you you know you're dealing with it maybe on your own and you're just really getting an increased form of anxiety you know we just tend to not have conversations with a simple phone call can help but are there you speak about, that's a mind thing you're speaking about there, but also we're made up of chemicals in this body. So is there some sort of underlying medical problem that can be causing my anxiety symptoms? Yep, that's a great question, JD. Um, your thyroid is very important. Right. Um, so health is the balance of body, mind, and soul. That's very important to understand. Right. So almost any illness can produce anxiety depending on how you as the individual internalize that illness, yeah. you know, from, from a simple thing as COVID, not simple, sorry, the, the flu 
to COVID to, to a devastating dis, um, diagnosis such as um, autoimmune um, cancer, um, and the list goes on. So it depends on how you internalize that diagnosis as a patient. So those can cause anxiety. However, the thyroid hormones are very important in terms of our emotional state. Um, and so a, a overactive and underactive thyroid can influence your, your emotional state. Um, your corticosteroids can also influence your emotional state. For women, menopause and perimenopause can influence their emotional state because of the imbalance yeah. of the, at the time of their reproductive hormone. So that's the estrogen and the, the progesterone and then the LH and FSH. Um, also, um, you can have, I mean, so those are the, the other illnesses that can directly influence and produce anxiety. Um, but any illness can produce anxiety because it will impact on your psyche, depending mm -hmm. on how you accept that illness. But in terms of the hormonal, the endocrine system, they can affect you because of the imbalance of hormones and how it will then affect the neurotransmitters at the level of the brain. So going back just a few minutes, you spoke about the importance of having uh, conversations with persons to just get it out, speak about it. But what about therapy? How do you feel about you know, getting into that, as they say, that brown couch and having that conversation with be it a family therapist, a psychologist, whatever it may be to help you along dealing with your anxiety? Well, when you look at treatment of anxiety, depending on what is happening, if it's an acute anxiety right. crisis, if it's an anxiety disorder, if it's a panic attack that you have, because a panic attack is like where you actually almost feel that you're dying and that right. you're having a heart attack because it mimics a heart attack. Um, so it depends on what's happening. So if it's a very acute, you have to seek medical attention first because they have to rule out that there's nothing else wrong and it is indeed anxiety at the time. Once that is diagnosed, therapy, ongoing treatment is important. And this is where um, we talk about meditation, breathing mm -hmm. techniques, acknowledging that you suffer from anxiety is very important. Um, also, um, doing um, psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is amazing. I have never been to a psychotherapist <laughs> um, as yet. Some people probably think I should be going to one regularly, but um, <laughs> a psychotherapist is, is an amazing person to speak to because they're not related to you. They're not your In family. Anyways, they're right. not your friend. And they're basically allowing you to air your grievances, speak about how you're feeling, and supporting you to enable your coping mechanism, right? right? So psychotherapy is very important and it's something mental health in the Caribbean has made great strides, but we have a far way to go because, so psychotherapy is very important because you are able to speak to that person. You don't know them. They're not close to you. There's no issue at all. And, and, and you don't feel judged. Right. You understand? So you're able to bounce that off. They help you to, to enable your coping mechanisms. Mental health in the Caribbean has taken great strides, but we have a far way to go. Because what's important, J.D., is that if anxiety is not dealt with right. and gets worse and worse and worse, and you get a, a generalized anxiety disorder, um, and, and you really can't handle and your coping mechanisms are all very weak, we can see patients um, attempting suicide or mm. committing suicide. So JD, something that's important to remember right. is also there are certain medications that can impact on your mental health and cause anxiety. It depends on how you as the individual assimilate medication. So it's also important to recognize that there may be medication that you're given for one illness that may impact, apart from you accepting the fact that you have the illness, the medication can cause at some times. Um, it's not very frequent, but I'm just right. letting you know that it's a possibility. All right, cool. Thank you for that. So here's another question, Dr. Santo Leblanc. Should uh, or are there lifestyle changes? Because you mentioned, you know, uh, meditation, but are right. there lifestyle changes that one should adopt to assist in this progress of trying to feel better and not having these attacks? Yeah, so JD, you know, it's important to understand that you have to recognize your mental state, recognize your mental health and where you're at. Um, and from there, you have to 
determine how strong your coping mechanisms are and also seek help. So we've spoken about that. But what else can you do? Mm -hmm. Ensuring meditation, ensuring that you have your breathing techniques, exercising, right. Right. journaling your emotions. Because in, in Chinese medicine, for example, and I tell people this all the time, when you don't deal with your emotions effectively, so if I get upset and I don't let out that emotion and I internalize and I keep internalizing and internalizing and internalizing, it becomes a pressure cooker. You understand? And it's mm -hmm. going to explode at some point. Mm -hmm. How it explodes is a different situation. So it's about journaling. Um, you know, JD, that's why I, I, for example, my background now, be one with nature, looking at nature, um, understanding where you are in the universe, who you are, being mindful of yourself. Eating a balanced diet is so important to your emotional state. Because if you eat natural, healthy, balanced meals, then your hormone levels are controlled much better. Right. And that will then impact on your mental health. You understand? Sleep, JD, so important. And it's sleep effective sleep. sleep cycle. And, and you have to sleep properly, not, not a, oh God, wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, you need effective sleep. And we spoke about sleep already we, when we spoke about insomnia. And it's very important because when you get that balance and then you get up and you exercise and you, mm -hmm. you breathe and you, you have a, a routine and you go through it and you're effective, but also acknowledging that if something happens, it's not all gone. You have to enable your coping mechanism. So those are the lifestyle aspects when it comes to, to, to dealing with anxiety. Still sticking on lifestyle. Some people think that it is important to use alcohol as a sort of a buffer <laughs> or one of those things that can certainly help us deal with the anxiety. Can you speak to persons like that? And we speak about alcohol, but some may even use drugs, you know, as, as a result. So, of so that alcohol and drugs are easy crutches. To, to dealing with anxiety and mental health issues, but they're the worst crutches to use right. because they, they don't really solve the problem. They don't support your coping mechanism. They actually make you now an addict mm -hmm. and dependent on them because it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a false high. And then eventually the threshold for how much you need to feel better goes up and up and up and up. That means you need more than one beer. You need two. Then you need three. Then you need four then beer might mean up. So you need gin, you need vodka, you need rum, you yeah, know, and you go on. Or you start with marijuana and from yes. marijuana you go on to cocaine or whatever. So it's, it's the worst decision that you can make is to turn to narcotics or alcohol. Because I consistently hear that with different persons thinking this is the best way for one to deal with whatever issues they may have. It calm, I, I I hear, I remember this particular person keeps saying to me, Jay, it calms me. And I don't think that is obviously one of the best ways to attack or even deal with this particular situation being if it's anxiety or, so that's why I asked well, that question. I really. mean, alcohol, alcohol will calm everybody. I mean, when you have a hard day, don't you say I'm going home for a glass of wine? Yes. I mean, but, I said but, it on Friday. I've had a hard <laughs> week. I'm going home for not one drink. I need two, you know, but that doesn't happen every day. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, so that's yeah. where it's important to understand that, and and you know, JD, it's it's a hard thing to say to people. Know yourself and be mindful, Absolutely. because we're talking from a position of strength. You know, when that person is in that situation, they have to dig deep. You understand. And I, I think people need to understand that that is why you're not alone during that time. Mm. And, and this is where, I mean, even acupuncture, cupping, herbs, supplements, balanced diet, etc. But you have to recognize, it's so important to recognize when it's happening, when it's starting to happen, so that you, you, you sort of nip it in the bud, you know? But JD, there, there's some people that are, born with an inherent anxious spirit um, spirit or you know composure you know what i mean and 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 you call them flighty or 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 you can't handle stress at all you know um and so then they'll say yeah but you've never felt what i felt 
Right. You don't feel what I feel. And this is where you truly have to decide as an individual, you want help. You're going to seek help and you will overcome it. And that has to come from you. Nobody can tell you to do that. You understand? Yeah. And that's where the support system is important. So for example, if I see you, so I've seen you, for example, in some state and I will yes. call and say, yes. you know, what's going on? Wh what's up? Yeah. You yeah. know, um, so, so having friends or having people that know you, I, you know, I, I think I'm your friend. Uh, say, <laughs> say, 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 you say are? You, I recognize something is happening. You understand? Um, so, for example, PMS, you know, a lot of young women and, and, and our age as well, we get PMS. And as we get older, the PMS seems to morph into something more disastrous. Um, and, and, and so, you know, that week before your period, all of a sudden you become Godzilla, you know, you, you're like bipolar, they call you. So I think understanding that, JD, and understanding where you want to be, you understand? So I know I don't want to be anxious. I know I don't want to be stressed out excessively. So I have to deal with it. Do I get stressed sometimes? Yes. But then I reach for my support. So it could be music. It could be reading, journaling, exercising. Um, a warm cup of chamomile, you know, Brahmi, um, Tulsi, um, any of these options before it gets worse. So you have to be mindful about your health because health is the balance of body, mind, and soul. So you have to understand that you are the protagonist of your health. Nobody else is. And you're right. I'm thinking about some weeks ago, there was a young lady um, she is the writer for, I'm not sure if you know, but this television series called This Is Us. And she, I, I, she, she died really young, I think at 39, 40, somewhere there. And it was later on realized that she committed suicide. And, you know, looking at, so I instantly went and looked at her Instagram page because this woman is in the spotlight. She's doing everything. She's got everything happening for her. She's, I mean, the personality, if you look at her videos, she's, you know, on point. And I smile because it's, it's sad that we, we do this, this, this facade so well. Yes. But JD, look at Robin Williams. This is my Kate thing. Spade. Um, he there are many like people. Her. Yeah. You have so many. And, and forget about the stars. But there are people that we, we know. Have yes, yes. People that we know. I have patients. So, I, you know, but this, I was telling my aunt um, yesterday, and I was telling her, I, I just don't understand why people have to put everything on social media. You understand? Because we get justification. And, yeah. and, and, and right. And, and so COVID has made everybody a star. COVID has made everybody a star. But with that, are we oversharing? Mm -hmm. Are we undersharing? Are we hiding behind what we think is the norm? You know, is it eventually going to be detrimental? Yes, this it is. whole social media craze. Yes, it is. Um, and, and so should we recognize it now and put a stop to it? Should we tell people, remind our friends and our family the importance of a face-to-face -face connection? You understand, and not the whole world doesn't need to know what we talk about. The whole world doesn't need to know that I'm married for how many years yeah. and what it bliss and I'm married. You don't need to know how long. You understand, um, but but why do we need that validation? You understand, and this is where mindfulness and Deepak Chopra always says, you know, if you can't sit alone by yourself mm. for even. 15 seconds or 30 seconds, something is wrong. Just Absolutely. in calm. You understand? Absolutely. You have to be able to be with yourself. If you are not with yourself, then, you know. And, th and that's, that being with yourself that he speaks of is totally not picking up your phone for a second. And, it, you know, it's something that <laughs> we try. Think about it. You know, I smile because sometimes we may be in the bank. We may be waiting at one of the ministries to get something done. And we're done. just on our phone. We're just on our phone. <laughs> we're like, yeah, what because... happened? You know, my, my husband is talking to me. I'm in a conference. I'm like, oh my God, Luke just brought something out. You know, oh my God, CNN just said this. Oh, BBC. Oh, this. 
And so now you have to shut off all those notifications because it's just too much. And so all I find, into it. and I find that it's, I reach, I, I think I got to a point um, during the lockdown where I said, you know what? That's it. I can't keep up. I need to be with me. Yeah. I need to, you know, you need to be with yourself and enjoy yourself. I need to read a book. I need to lay in a hammock. I need to just be. I need to cook. I need to eat. Go in the in garden. Peace. You know, go in the garden. Yeah. And so you have to recognize and hopefully at an early stage, but it's never too late. So if you know you have anxiety, you understand that you're an anxious person, start to build. But don't be discouraged if you have a bad day. Don't right. be discouraged if you have a bad week. You understand? Because there are other influences. But try and build and strengthen on those mechanisms. Don't let it throw you back to the, the starting no, line. Just know it's, it's part of the process. Exactly. If you it. fall down, pick yourself up. So that, well, you just answered, or you touched on the question that I was going to ask about what are the things that we need to do. So you're talking about gardening, going for that walk, listening to music, because music is that international language that really... Of healing. Healing of for healing. everybody. So yeah. these are the things we need to tap into just to deal with the anxiety that makes Because exist. don't you find that you could feel down and you could pick up a song that was there's from one your childhood. Song. Mm-hmm. And there's just that song that takes you back. I have songs that make me remember my grandfather or my grandmother or my, I don't know, the first date or, you know, something well, to yeah, that effect. Yeah, yeah. And, and that takes you, and, that, and that's, that's why it's so amazing being a human because we have so many things and ways we can, to, to fix our emotional status. It, the nostalgia, the memories, we have all of that poems um yeah. just listening you know sometimes it's not even a song that's written by anybody it's an old school song you used to sing you know school days they still have their mind you know i mean anything like that and i can't sing to save my life but the reality is that dig deep that's what we want you to do dig deep and know that you're not alone and pick up that phone that you're always on looking at everybody's life exactly. and call Exactly. You know, and that is why have, I mentioned, sorry, that is why I mentioned the writer because she's surrounded by so many people. I, I but wanted she's to just, surrounded, but yet alone. Yes. And trust me, I can relate to that. You've heard me say that many times. Yes. So, <laughs> no, and that's why I, I, I can connect to these people because I can understand how they feel sometimes. But I also want to put not too much, but a little bit of responsibility on that friend. Because sometimes you need to check on your strong friend because you may appear strong like she did. I'm telling you, if you, if you research her, she absolutely a strong person. And there are many others, as you said, that do that. But ta- her friends or families needed to really check in and see if there were any subtle signs. Because there were signs know, before. Uh, yes, I know. on the on, on the platforms. On the platforms. And she now did. these days, as teenagers, they start to cut. Because right. that's self pain. So you have to look, and I'm sure if they, you know, like when they went through Kate's Fate's phone as well, or her Instagram, they found something. When they went, through, I'm sure, and I, I don't know if that's right for us to call people out. I'm not sure, but legally, that's, I'm, I, I'm, I'm indemnifying myself from anything. Right. I'm just giving examples. Examples. As, that's all. Yeah. This is what we saw. I'm not saying that they're the only examples. I'm just saying that this is known. You know what I mean? So even patients we've had, I've had um, friends I know, you see the evidence. Um, somehow, some point. way, you see it. Yeah. That's my point. If, if those that love you see the evidence, then you need to check on that person. Sometimes the ones that are around you and love you may see it, but they too are afraid. Mm. Because it takes a lot out of a friend. Mm. To take on an anxiety friend. You okay. understand? So okay. that's true friendship. So it's it's also about how is your coping mechanism? You know, some people say, look, I really have enough. Of my I was thing. about to I say. Can't I can't take enough. on more. Eh? I, really, I, I, I ain't study. Heard no more. But, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you just have to read it through and, and try, you know, try your so, best. But support, support always. 
So this is the live checkup with Dr. Santi Leblanc. I'm JD. We're speaking about anxiety and dealing with anxiety, whether it's the symptoms, the signs that show up, as well as the treatment of what you can do uh, to help those that are dealing with it. And I just want, before we get ready to wrap it up inside of our conversation today, Dr. Santi Leblanc, again, can you speak on, because you are the holistic doctor, Dr. Ginger as well. Can you speak on some of the things, the natural remedies we can, what we can adopt again to make this journey, you know, just a little bit less stressful? Because it is indeed yes, a stressful indeed. time. Um, right now. And I will touch on Caribbean herbs if possible. So we have um, chamomile for sure. Right. We have um, tulsi, which is holy basil. Um, those are phenomenal. Um, we have, um, in terms of Western herbs, so not indigenous to the Caribbean all the time, we can use um, bacopa or brahmi, ashwagandha, um, California poppy, catnip skullcap, valerian, um, prickly poppy, um, old Indian, um, old, old Indian, yes, that's, that's the name. Um, they, it has many names. Um, so these, these old Indian warrior. And so these are herbs that I personally like to put in a formula. Right. And I, I, I like to, to combine them because they all, some stop you from overthinking a lot. Some help you deal with your stress mechanism. So they call adaptogens, so such as rhodiola and eleuthero. Right. Um, um, but if you tell me, look, I just feel stressed out. Honestly, my go-to is ginger and turmeric with ginger. golden milk. Mm -hmm. That is my go-to. And then I may do some tulsi. I add right. some tulsi to, to it. But rosemary is also phenomenal. And we have rosemary we have that, here. Yes, yes. And basil. You can also do a basil tea. Lemongrass as well quite calming so, so you know you you have options um passion fruit i spoke about passion flower um in one of my tips before which is the passion flower from the vine right. of course i like my passion fruit so i'm not giving away my passion flower but passion flower is very good as well um in terms of anxiety and calming the mind but you know breathing drinking those teas calming you down using proper balanced meals plus supplement if we look at vitamins going out into the sunlight because that's vitamin d excellent um and just magnesium sometimes depending on how you're feeling menopausal women especially um primrose or rose mm -hmm. can also help if they're perimenopausal or hormonal um so there's a gamut of things jd so i think for anxiety this is one illness or disorder i would say please go to your doctor Speak to the certified herbalist. Yes. Um, look at your options and get help early. Don't try to do it on your own. And that's Honestly. an important fact there. Right? And right because there. it's important to go to your doctor because you have to do the blood test to rule out that there's no underlying illness, which we discussed before, that is influencing or impacting on your yeah. anxiety. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, it's always good chatting with you and mm -hmm. always good for you to certainly tackle the questions, whether it's from me or from our viewers. So thank you so much as always, Dr. Santi Leblanc. You know, we cannot end this chat without you just giving us some more details, uh, maybe on your new website that you are certainly oh proud, my gosh, of, very yes. proud of. Very proud of. I'm working on it. I'm working <laughs> on it. So it's www.victoria-clinic.net. And I encourage you to visit the website. Um, you can give me feedback if you want, um, but also subscribe to the newsletter. Because right. that way you'll find out what's happening with Victoria Clinic. You'll get tips and, and tricks as I as I put them out, my blogs and our our specials. Also, um, find us on Facebook. Join us, um, Victoria Clinic on Facebook. And Instagram is Victoria Clinic underscore Trinidad. And um, we're located at 54 Gala Street, Woodbrook, 622-2221, 622-0683. And I mean, our website has all the information of contact. And it's really been a pleasure, JD. And of course, you can see some videos as well. The doctor is being very humble. I haven't She's done some... videos on anxiety, but maybe I'll do just a general on yeah. acupuncture yeah. for anxiety. I'll see if I get my model to help me out. Co-host, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for looking on, guys. Please share this video, all right? If you don't know who you're going to be helping. As, as I just said before, be that friend who may help 
the strong friend with this simple video. We appreciate that. www.jdmedia868.com. That's my website. Check me out, of course, on Facebook as well. You can see me there and Instagram. All the is certainly below, but much love as always. And thank you for allowing us inside of your Thursday evening. Have a good night.